Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you all here today and see such a large crowd here. If there's one thing, and I've said it over the last few days on several occasions, the IFA is very clear. We believe we have the right to peaceful protest. And that's why we're here to deliver a very clear message to Minister Coveney with a peaceful protest of over three and a half thousand farmers here in Carrigaline. I'd like to thank Timmy and others for the huge effort put in to organise this. And we're here with one very simple, clear message for the Minister. We've come here to stand up for ourselves and we've come here to say no to the cuts that the Minister is proposing. Yeah. Yeah. We're fighting for the future of the family farm. And as all the commodity chairman said before me, whether it's in dairy, whether it's beef, sheep or grain, we're fighting for the farmers who are willing to get up in the night, go out there and lamb sheep, calf cows, take a chance on investing in their business. And we're saying very clearly, if the minister wants to protect jobs, protect 300,000 jobs in the Irish economy and 9 billion in exports, you have to protect the active farmer. And we absolutely reject his proposals for between 20 and 40% cut to our single farm payment. As already said last autumn, the minister did a tour of the country. And I was quite happy to travel with him where we were talking about protecting the family farm. I saw the abandoned beef producer group here represented earlier on. He attended their meetings and stood up and said he'd limit the cut to 6 to 7 percent, 80 million euros. But as Henry Byrne said, within a few days he went from 80 million to 250 million euros. The difference there is from an average 6 to 7 percent cut, talking about for over 60,000 farmers, an average 27 percent cut. Not acceptable. Not acceptable. The minister, in his most recent meetings, has done everything to confuse farmers. He is absolutely trying to confuse you. He's not explaining that there's already 110 million gone, 9% gone off the top between young farmers, national reserve, linear cut, and the crisis management fund. That's 110 million euros which is taken off the top. And IFA has been absolutely clear from the start. This debate has gone on for over three years. We've always said we supported young farmers. We support the 2%, the 25% top up for young farmers, using objective criteria. We support the 3% national reserve, which is 36 million euros for farmers with low entitlements if it doesn't reflect their level of activity. But we're very clear that 60 million euros has been redistributed. We have to get credit for that. It cannot be 110 million and another 150 million on top of that. Because 150 on top of 110 is over 250 million euros. Here, here, here. We're here talking about the future of the family farm. We're talking about survival. We're talking about farm incomes. The taggish figures are very clear. Family farm income over the last number of years has been quite modest and very variable. From 2009, disastrous weather, rising input costs and bad commodity prices, farm income collapsed. A medium year in 10, a medium year in 11, better year in 11, and 12, the weather comes against us. Most farmers standing in front of me here today would not have been able to pay their merchant, would not have been able to pay their silage contractor, or pay the bank were it not for their single farm payment. And if we cut, the farmers here in front of me and the farmers throughout Ireland, if we have a cut of this magnitude of 20 to 40 percent, most farmers will not be able to pay their bills and grow their business. Here, here, here. The next short period will be critical. On the 25th of February, the Minister put forward his proposals for approximation. At the same time, the Commission put on the table a proposal for a minimum payment of €196. Euros. The combination of the two of them 
would result in a huge cut for active farmers. We are very clear to our minister here. The minister, as was said by all the previous speaker, was elected to do one job. He was elected to represent Irish farmers. He was elected to protect the family farm. And he has to stand up to Commissioner Shawless and clearly say no way, no day. Here, here, here. That doesn't include greening for flattening. That doesn't include 196 euros as a minimum payment. And that has a modest level of redistribution. Here, 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 here. There's a lot of spin by the minister and other politicians at the moment. The big spin is, it's only 70 to 80 million euros. It's only 9%. There's 9% gone already. There's another 9% proposed for the approximation, and the flat payment brings that up to 250 million euros. Very clearly, this is not about big farmers versus small farmers. This is not about east-west. I'm delighted to see farmers here from all four provinces. To see buses here from Cavan and Monaghan, buses from Galway and Mayo, buses from Leinster, and a huge turnout from Cork and Munster, representing every parish in Ireland, where there will be losers. The figures show that there's no truth that this is only hitting big farmers. There's over 60,000 farmers that would take an average 27% cut. There's 42,000 farmers with a single farm payment between 250 and 400 euros with an average single farm payment of 12,000 euros, that would take a 3,000 cut. So farmers with an average payment of 12,000 to take a 3,000 cut, and that's big farmers, no. it's scandalous to be putting that spin on <laughs> Said As other speakers said, the cap has to be about food production. The cap has to be about jobs and exports. If we want the EU taxpayers to continue to fund the common agricultural policy, there has to be a level of objective criteria. It has to be for the working farmer. And what we are looking for here today is a balanced common agricultural policy, a balance between pillar one and pillar two. Pillar one for active farmers to feed a half billion people in Europe. Pillar two for public good environmental measures. And I agree totally with what Lauren McCarthy said. Pillar two has to be co-funded 50-50. 313 million from Brussels, 313 from the Irish government to have proper disadvantaged area payments, proper environmental schemes. Here, that's very important. Here, here. It's simple and it's sharp. The message is there can be no sellout of agriculture. There can be no sellout of the family farm. And the minister must do his job and protect active farmers. He must substantially reduce any cut to active farmers. He has to stand up to Commissioner Scholes and reverse his proposals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are going to be two critical days for Irish farmers. Every farmer here, whether they're young people here, I'm delighted to see teenagers here and see people here in their 70s who took the bother to come here today. But the future of your family farm is going to be decided in Brussels on the 18th, 19th of March. That's 10 days away from now. And I have a very clear message for Simon Coffey. Absolutely every hour between now and the 18th, 19th of March, he has to use to defend your payment, to defend your livelihood, and reverse Scholas's plan. <laughs> and any cut that takes place to spread it over the longest time frame. Here, here, here. Finally, I want, to, I want to thank everyone for taking the effort to come here. It's a very simple, straightforward message. The minister was elected to do a job. Over 3,000 farmers came here to deliver that message to them. We will be having a meeting with the Minister later in the day, where I'm delighted to say that I'll be able to represent your views to them. Thank you. Marcus Healy. And I just ask everybody that has one of these posters to hold it up just for one second. Now just turn that poster around and have the red face in you. what has happened to the minister. He has blanked out Irish farmers, is what he has done. And that's all I want to say to you, but just remember that. He has blanked us out, so he has. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it. You've heard it very clearly. You've heard it from your host, Jimmy.